In the late 1970s, deep inside the halls of Princeton University, a group of scientists began a strange experiment. It was not about rockets or chemistry or engineering. It was about something far more mysterious, the power of the human mind. This experiment was led by Dr. Robert John, an aerospace engineer who had once worked with NASA. The team wanted to test an ancient question with modern science. Could human consciousness actually interact with machines? Could thought itself leave a measurable fingerprint on reality? To find out, they built small electronic devices called random number generators RNGs. These machines designed only to spit out endless streams of unpredictable zeros and ones were supposed to be immune to influence, pure chance, absolute randomness. But then something unexpected began to happen. When people focused their minds the numbers shifted, subtle but undeniable. It was as if intention itself could bend the fabric of randomness. This was the seed of an idea. If one person's focused mind could create a tiny ripple, what about millions of minds feeling the same emotion at the same time? Now picture this. A wave of emotion sweeps across the planet. Billions of hearts beating with the same rhythm of shock, grief or joy. And at that very moment, something extraordinary happens. Machines built only to crunch numbers without feeling suddenly start to shift as if they too are responding. Friends, science has found evidence that our minds are not isolated but connected in a mysterious global field of consciousness. This is not a movie script. This is a real scientific project from Princeton University. It is called the Global Consciousness Project GCP. And once you understand it, your idea of mind, reality and human connection will never be the same again. Friends, for centuries mystics have said we are all one. Our consciousness is connected. What affects one affects all. But these were just poetic claims. Where was the proof? That's where Princeton scientists stepped in. They decided to test with hard data whether human consciousness could leave an imprint on physical systems, whether our collective emotions could be measured, and what they discovered is nothing short of mind-bending. Thus, in 1998, the Global Consciousness Project was born. Here is how the project was set up. Dozens of RNGs were placed in different parts of the world tiny devices generating endless streams of random numbers, zeros and ones. The data from these RNGs was sent back in real time to, the, to a central server at Princeton University. The machines kept running day and night, producing random noise. The hypothesis was bold. When large numbers of people share the same emotional state like joy, grief, shock, this collective wave of consciousness would influence the RNGs, making them produce patterns that are less random. Think of it like this. Our minds, when synchronized, could create a global field, subtly ordering the chaos of randomness. The first big test came unexpectedly in August 1997 with the tragic death of Princess Diana as billions of people around the world were glued to their TVs, shocked and grieving, the RNG's data began to shift. Instead of random patterns, the machines started showing order, as if the world's grief was somehow reaching into the circuits. This was the first major evidence. 
collective emotion seemed to affect physical systems. But the real turning point came on September 11, 2001. You know the story. Planes striking the World Trade Center, the collapse of the towers, a world is turned in disbelief. While the world watched, something astonishing was happening in the background. The RNG network, scattered across the globe, glitched. For several hours around the attacks, the random data shifted far beyond chance expectations. It was as if the machines themselves were feeling the shockwave of global consciousness. Scientists later calculated the odds of this happening by chance were less than one in a million. Dr. Roger Nelson called it a global mind quake, a measurable ripple in reality itself. The project kept running and over the years it has recorded hundreds of global events where people shared a powerful emotional focus like the Indian Ocean tsunami of 2004, the funeral of Nelson Mandela, the major World Cup finals and even the New Year's Eve celebrations. In each case, during moments of intense global attention, the RNGs showed significant deviations from randomness. Of course, such claims invite criticism. Skeptics argue that maybe it's just a statistical fluke. Maybe the data was cherry-picked and maybe there is some hidden technical error. But here is the key. Over 20 years with billions of random numbers analyzed, the data consistently shows patterns correlated with global emotional events. Statistically, the chance that this is just coincidence is less than one in a trillion. That number is hard to ignore. So what does this mean? If true, it suggests that consciousness is not locked in the skull. It radiates outward, interacting with the physical world. We are connected. In moments of great joy or tragedy, our minds link together, forming a collective field. The world itself may be responsive. Reality is not just dead matter, it seems to listen to the mind. This echoes ancient teachings, whether from Hinduism, Buddhism or indigenous traditions that speak of a universal mind, a web of consciousness connecting all beings. Friends, the beauty of the Global Consciousness Project is this. It takes a mystical idea, the unity of minds and gives it scientific support. Imagine your private thoughts may be small, but when billions of minds synchronize, they create a measurable fingerprint on reality. This changes how we see ourselves. We are not just isolated individuals existing in a meaningless universe. We are nodes in a vast network of mind. Now the question is, what can we do with this knowledge? Friends, studies suggest that when groups meditate together, crime rates drop and communities feel calmer. If consciousness is non-local, then collective positive intention could truly influence the world. Now listen to me carefully. Every emotion, every thought adds to the field. When we spread fear, anger or hatred, we may be polluting the collective field. When we cultivate peace, love and compassion, we may literally be stabilizing the world. So you may think that you are small, but your consciousness is part of something bigger. Every thought echoes beyond your skull into the fabric of a reality. Now, let me leave you with this image. On New Year's Eve, as the clock strikes midnight, people all over the world cheer, hug and celebrate. At that very moment, 
the global consciousness project records a beautiful deviation from randomness as if the earth itself is joining the party it's like a whisper from the universe saying i hear you i feel you you are not alone you are part of a greater mind so next time you feel joy love or even sorrow remember it doesn't just stay inside you it ripples outward touching people you will never meet leaving fingerprints on reality itself let me remind you our minds matter our unity matters our consciousness may be the most powerful force in this whole universe thank you for watching